In this episode, I want to talk just quickly about a free plugin you can download to use in Adobe Audition for processing audio. And it's really just sort of a tool to help you identify potential problems or make decisions about how to post-process your audio. And really, we're just going to talk about this in the context of kind of setting it up for future episodes, but it's a really helpful learning tool as well. Let me show you what I mean here. This is a, an effect called Voxengo Span. Span stands for Spectrum Analyzer, and that's exactly what it is. It's what's called a Spectrum Analyzer. And in some cases, it's also called a Real-Time Analyzer. But the idea is that as you play through your audio, it represents the amplitude of the various frequencies in your audio. What I mean by that is, over here, we have the typical frequency axis here. So these are the low frequency sounds, the bass sounds, we have the mid-tone or the mids, and then we have the high frequency sounds or treble sounds over here on the right hand side. Now watch what happens as I play through a piece of dialogue audio. Now we've looked at several recorders and recorder mixers in the past, generally at the consumer and prosumer level. The question I've gotten several times is, well, why are these professional recorder and mixers so expensive? Why? So that's kind of interesting there. You can see the low frequency sounds are represented on this side. Again, the high frequency sounds on this side. Watch what happens and listen as I say the letter S or C. Those are kind of what we typically refer to as the more sibilant sounds. <laughs> and they produce a sort of sizzling sound. And you'll see those represented in the analyzer up in this area over here. So watch again. Why do they cost $3,000 more than the what seems like the equivalent consumer or prosumer type of recorder? And when I say consumer or prosumer, I'm really referring to a lot of the recorders like the Handy series from Zoom. So that's going to be the H4n. The H Do you notice there that when I say the letter S, this part of the graph seems to jump up some in terms of amplitude. So this can be a really helpful tool in a variety of ways. Now, one of the ways that we'll talk about in more detail in a future episode is to actually identify where the sibilance occurs. And oftentimes the plugins that do sibilance will help you do that, but there's another kind of application that I've been using and experimenting with a little bit lately, and that is using a multiband compressor. Using the span plugin and a spectrum analyzer, I can actually decide where I wanna break up the different bands for my multiband compressor. So I wanna compress the maybe 4K and higher separately from 4K and under. And that's what I found really useful. And let me just go, kind of show you a couple other things really quickly, and then go into just to just kind of introduce the whole topic of multiband compression as well. So we have a few different modes here on the span plugin. Right now it's set to default. So this is just kind of a typical spectrum analyzer right now. One that I found pretty interesting and helpful as well is this average plus max. Watch what happens now when we run H5, the H6. I'm um, talking about the Tascam DR series of recorders, the DR60D, and uh, so on and so forth. So those really I would consider more prosumer um, and on the lower end perhaps even more consumer. But the difference has a lot more to do with things other than just sound quality, although that's part of it, and just build quality, although that's also part of it as well. Okay, so now you can see on we have kind of two different graphs here. And this is the average down here, and this is the max. So this is actually pretty helpful here. So for example, in the compression example I was talking about earlier, I might want to compress everything, say, somewhere maybe around 3.5K and lower with a separate threshold. Here, let me explain why. So if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes on compression, I recommend you go take a look at those. And one of the things that we talked about there was a threshold setting in a compressor. And a threshold determines at what point the compressor starts to kind of mash down the peaks of the audio. So for example here, if I wanted to kind of pull these down a little bit so they were a little more even and not louder than some of the other pieces here, I would probably set my threshold somewhere in this area here. See the horizontal line that goes across there? So any of those peaks that exceed this horizontal line, I might want to compress there. Then if I had a separate band to compress everything, it was 3.5K and higher, that's everything to the right of my pointer right now, I could actually set a different threshold. And in that case, I'd probably want to set the threshold down lower, like maybe in this area here. So for, again, 3.5K and high, or lower, excuse me, 3.5K and lower, I might want to set the threshold here. And then for 3.5K and higher, I might want to set it more down here. The reason I'd want to do that is that if I just set a global threshold that, that affects all of the frequencies, 
like typical kind of basic compressor would do, and I set it right here, what would happen is all of these peaks over here would get compressed, they'd get pulled down in amplitude, but everything above here would not even get touched, it would just stay at the same amplitude. And the overall effect of that, the over kind of the end result is that these sibilant frequencies would get emphasized because now they are louder in relation to the main body of the audio, the mid and low frequencies, than they were before. And the, re the result is that you'll get a, an audio, a dialogue audio that sounds very, very sibilant and the S's can start to grate on people. <laughs> so it's not a pleasant thing. So using a plugin like Span or Spectrum Analyzer, you can actually identify, hey, at what point do I want to kind of divide things up? I wanna do separate compression for this group or this, this set of frequencies versus this set of frequencies. And that's one example of the things you might use it for. So without getting more into that for now, we'll come back and talk to that, to that a little bit more in detail later on. Let's talk about where you get this plugin and how you plug it in. So first of all, you wanna head over to the Voxango site. I'll put a link for this down below in the description underneath the video. And then you just download the appropriate one for your particular computer, whether it's a Mac or a PC. And on a Mac, you get a couple different choices here. Here's the general idea with plugins. On a Mac, if you are using something like Logic, Apple Logic, for a digital audio workstation, you uh, although I think it supports VST now as well, but AU is kind of the audio units format that was developed a long time ago for Apple devices. AAX is actually a plug-in format for Pro Tools. And then VST and VST3 were originally actually developed on the PC platform, but they that's what I use typically in Adobe Audition. So I would download this one for my Mac. If you're on a PC, it's a single button to download all of these different versions, VST, VST3, and AAX for either Windows 32 or Windows 64 bits. So first of all, you wanna download that. Once you've downloaded it on the Mac, and I assume there is actually an installer on the PC side, although I don't have a PC here to test that. But the idea here is, uh, in the case of Adobe Audition with the current versions, it supports VST3, which is a kind of the next generation of the VST plugin format. I would just install the VST3. And to do that on a Mac, all you have to do is grab the VST3 file, span.vst3, and drop it in the VST3 folder. Next thing we do once we're over in Adobe Audition is come up to the effects menu and go to Audio Plugin Manager. And then on the Audio Plugin Manager, you click the Scan for Plugins button. That may take a couple of minutes. Once the scanning is completed, you will notice that there are a lot of plugins. So you, you may or may not have this many, depending on if you've installed any in the past. But for example, if I scroll down here, I will find my Voxango Span plugin is there. It is enabled and it is working. Then it's just a matter of coming up to the effects menu, VST3, Analyzer, and Span. Your menu structure may be just a little bit different. So go ahead and use this plugin and use it as a learning tool. Use it to kind of play through some different uh, recordings that you have and see how the meter reacts to different types of sounds. It's a very, very instructive thing to do. You'll start to see patterns. You'll start to be able to predict and understand how fre different frequencies work and how recordings work and be able to start to solve particular problems and notice particular problems when you use your spectrum analyzer. So we'll go ahead and come back to this and get into a lot more detail later on. I hope that was helpful for now. Go ahead and ask any questions you have down below in the comments. And if you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that and be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.